Today we're going to talk about how to find probabilities for continuous random variables. Now if a random variable is continuous, it has a density with respect to Lebesgue measure. So if we have a continuous random variable x, it has a density that we'll call f sub x. Now once you have the density of the random variable, if you want to know the probability that the random variable falls between two values a and b, then you just integrate the density from a to b. That is, this probability is the integral as some dummy variable, I'll use s in this case, runs from a to b of the density of the random variable evaluated at s. That's all there is to setting up your integral. Let's look at some examples. Suppose that our random variable x is uniform over the closed interval from 0 to 2, which means that the density of x at the dummy variable s is going to be 1 half times the indicator that s is between 0 and 2. And suppose we're interested in knowing what's the probability that this random variable falls between 1 and 3 halves. Well, Using our formula that we talked about earlier, this is just the integral as s goes from 1 to 3 halves of 1 half times the indicator s is between 0 and 2. Well, the indicator function that s is between 0 and 2 is always going to be 1 for s between 1 and 3 halves. So we can just ignore that indicator function. And we're left with the integral of 1 half from 1 to 3 halves. The integral of a constant over an interval is just the constant times the width of the interval. And so this is equal to 1 half times 3 halves minus 1 or 1 fourth. move on to another example. Suppose now that we've got a random variable w that's an exponential distribution with rate parameter 2. That makes the density of w, and I'll just use a lowercase g for the density for a little variety, at dummy variable t is going to be 2 e to the minus 2t, at least as long as t is greater than or equal to 0. Now suppose that we want to find the probability that w is less than or equal to 2. Well, this doesn't quite have our a less than random variable less than b setup, but we can think about w being less than or equal to 2 as just being equal to the probability that negative infinity is less than w is less than or equal to 2. And now we can just write that integral the same way that we would if we had an upper and a lower bound. So we're going to be integrating from negative infinity up to 2 the density bt. Now remember, the indicator function is 1 when the expression inside is true and 0 otherwise, which means that when t is less than 0, this indicator function is 0, which means that it doesn't contribute anything to the integral. In practical terms, that means that we can change our lower bound to 0, up to 2. 2 e to the minus 2 t, dt. Now all we have to do is anti-differentiate our integrand. The antiderivative of 2 e to the negative 2 t is e to the negative 2 t with a minus sign. And we're going to evaluate between 0 and 2. And so we end up with 1 minus e to the minus 4. Okay. So again, if you're faced with a problem of less than or equal to, just put in a greater than minus infinity. Similarly, if you're trying to find the probability a random variable is greater than or equal to something, you put an upper bound of plus infinity. Let's do an example of that kind. Suppose that my random variable t is a beta with parameters 2 and 2, which means that the density of t at a random variable s 
is going to be 6s times 1 minus s, the indicator function that s has to be between 0 and 1. That tells us that the random variable t has to be between 0 and 1 with probability 1. Suppose we're interested in finding the probability that t is bigger than 1 half. Well, what we have to do is first give an upper bound of infinity. So this is equal to the probability that 1 half is less than t is less than infinity. And now we can write it as an integral. It's the integral as s goes from 1 half to infinity of 6s times 1 minus s times the indicator that s is between 0 and 1. Now the limits on the integral indicate that s can run from 1 half to infinity. But our indicator function tells us that s has to be between 0 and 1, which means that we can change this upper bound from an infinity down to a 1. So this is equal to the integral as s goes from 1 half to 1 of 6s times 1 minus s ds. The easiest way to anti-differentiate a polynomial like this is to first just multiply the polynomial out. This is equal to the integral as s runs from 1 half to 1 of 6s minus 6s squared ds. And now the antiderivative of 6s is s squared times 3. The antiderivative of minus 6s squared is minus 2s cubed. And we're evaluating those between 1 and 1 half. So we end up with 3 minus 2 minus 3 times 1 half squared minus 2 times 1 half cubed or 1 minus 3 fourths plus 1 fourth or 1 half. And that's our probability that this beta value is greater than or equal to 1 half.